Thank you, Rafael, for being the leader that you have been for us uh, in the Mexican-American Legislative Caucus. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to every single one of you Tejano Democrats. Thank you to you, Manuel Medina, uh, for allowing me to be a part of this discussion this morning. Um, I, want to, I want to stick to what Gonzalo said in perfect participation and what that looks like. And uh, just looking across the screen and everyone there, I'm not talking to beginners. It looks like I've got a, a screen full of veteranos. Uh, I proudly, uh, when speaking for the first time at my ever public speaking post-election, post-win, I spoke down in San Antonio with Southwest Voter Registration. And that's the first time I'd ever been in a room full of Latinos coming from North Texas. That's not the norm. Um, I, as you said, I am from North Texas. I was born and raised in Southeast Fort Worth, uh, the poor side of town, the formerly white post-integration, then very African-American, and saw firsthand the, the consequences of what uh, racial injustice looks like, saw firsthand what it looks like when black and brown people beat each other up and black and white people beat each other up. I had my femur broken when I was four years old on my own front porch. I was, uh, when I talk about perfect participation, that doesn't just necessarily mean just what we do and getting people to the polls. Let's talk about what we do in our daily lives. And I'll tell a little story of something that happened this year. I was at a bank, a bank that happens to be from San Antonio, big name bank, you guys know who it is, who sent an invitation that said, come to the insight into the 2020 election. And it turned out to be a Trump rally. The bank that I had a quarter of a million dollars in was now promoting Trump's agenda. So many people could just sit down and be quiet and not have anything to say. Well, that's not why people elected me. And I had to share my story of how difficult it was to be raised in that area and how dangerous it was for kids to walk around our neighborhood during that time. And now we've got to return to that time period. Many of you probably remember that time period and how dangerous that time period is. And that's why this president is that dangerous. But those hosts on that stage didn't believe, didn't care. I got heckled. We had to leave from that location. So just by your sheer presence here today, I think it was Carol Alvarado that said, we're here because we stand up. So in everything that we do, we must stand up, have our voices heard, and certainly those of us that are elected understand the power of our voices that we're not just speaking for ourselves, we're speaking for so many. I want to talk very quickly about something that I experienced on the campaign trail, and I've said many times, and it's my little story that I told, called the story of Paquet. Many of you guys have been out knocking on doors as I was when I ran for city council the first time. And as I went from door to door, people kept telling me, ¿Quieres que vote? ¿Pero pa' qué? Si ya tengo mi casa, está pagada. Tengo mi carro, todo está bien. ¿Pa' qué? Another one said, ¿Vote por usted? ¿Por qué? Si todos son ratas, ustedes los políticos. Todos son iguales, es igual como en México, son ratas. Another one said, Pero si mis hijos ya graduaron de la escuela, ya están en el colegio, sus, sus carreras les van bien, yo nunca he votado. ¿Para qué? One person, the last person that I went to, and it was actually across the street from the polling location at that time, told me, si voto para ti, ¿qué me vas a dar? Wow. I'm getting cold chills right now thinking about that moment. ¿Qué me vas a dar? We need to tell them and help them understand it's not about what I'm going to give you. It's about what we have to protect. And as we look around right now, what do we have to protect with the president in an office that's allowed the coronavirus to just run rampant around our country and especially within our Latino community? A president that's absolutely taken the DREAM Act and said, I don't care about that class of people, that type of people, because those are not my people. A, a president that doesn't even understand small businesses like mine because he's taken away the opportunity for businesses to bring in skilled labor. I took a lot of pride in fighting with my colleague, now future Senator Cesar Blanco for SB4. Many of you guys saw us all over the news standing up. Standing up when the time was right to stand up. So as we go about preparing for 2020 election in November, there will be many opportunities for us to stand up in every room that we are ever in to make sure that people know that this is the time when the moments of silence are not going to occur within our own selves. 
So my question for you and what I'd like to happen is that when someone asks us, pa que? we're going to turn that and we're going to say, por quien? Por quien? Por, tus, por, el futuro, por el futuro de tus hijos. Por el salud de tus viejitos. Y para el futuro de todos nosotros. Unidos como americanos y como tejanos demócratas. Thank you, guys.